Hey everyone, Rob Moroder here, and today I'm going to show you how we are going to add this image to this image to make it look like this. Okay, so the three complications that we're going to have is the fact that in this image, you can see that we've got some uh, plants and lights and chairs and things that are in the way. So how do we get our artwork on the wall to make it look realistic and have it behind all this stuff, right? Check it out. First thing that we're going to do is we're going to just pull everything into Photoshop. So I've got my main image here with my uh, with the interior shot there. I've also got my artwork here. I'm going to copy my artwork and go Command C and switch over to this side here and go Command V. Now you'll notice on the very right here in my layers that my artwork has just shown up. I'm going to drag that over to where I want the artwork to be, resize it. I think right around here is going to be good. don't want it to be too, uh, too big, but I also want it to be centered on the wall. How about like that? Does that work? I think that should, uh, that should work there. Now you'll notice that the artwork, isn't quite scaled or slanted or, you know, it's not to the proportion of the way that the uh, wall is. So we're going to have to adjust that. And the way to adjust anything like this is to grab the corners. Now, if I just grab the corner here and do it, it's just going to resize it, right? And so we don't want that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to hold down my command button and then all of a sudden my cursor turns to this white arrow. As soon as I do that, I can manipulate the, the shape of my object. So I'm just going to pull that down so that falls in line with the lines of the property here. Uh, same thing here. I've got to, I've got to do something with this bottom edge because you can see that um, the line of the table there. I'm going to just move this up slightly, and I think right around there. That looks about right, doesn't it? Good. Press enter to make that set and great. We've got our artwork there. Now, one of the things that we need to do to make this artwork look more realistic is to work on its lighting. Now there's two pieces of lighting that I want to work on here. The first one is going to be the shadows. So I'm going to double click on the layer and that'll bring up the layer style here. Okay. So again, I'm just going to double click on that layer and it brings up the layer style. On the bottom, we've got this one beautiful thing called the drop shadow, and that's exactly what it sounds like. We're going to drop a shadow behind it. The most important part about a drop shadow is going to be this angle, and the angle is going to set where the light is coming from. And because the light for this image is coming from the left, from the windows over here, I'm going to make this and set that probably around here, around 170, 180. Right, so it's directionally coming straight from the left. I might want to make it so it's coming down just slightly so that the shadow is also getting the bottom of the artwork. Next, from there, we've got uh, a few other things that we can play with. We've got the uh, blend mode to multiply. So essentially what it's doing is saying, okay, we've got the shadow, it's black, we're multiplying it against whatever the background is. You can use multiply, you can use darken, you can even use normal if you if you want. Uh, but don't use anything like lighten screen or color dodge because those, well, shadows don't lighten things, right? They don't screen things. They are either darkening or they are multiplying or making things even darker than what it is. So uh, multiply is the main one because if you seen a couple of my other videos or have taken my course, you'll know that the difference between multiply and darken is this. Darken will take the darker of the two. So if you are putting a shadow onto something that is black or say 50% gray, it will look and see whether or not the background is darker or if the shadow is darker. If the background is actually darker, it won't add a shadow. If you do multiply, it will multiply on top of it so that it will make it even darker, right? So multiply is the best for your drop uh, drop shadow blend mode. From there, opacity, if you make it 100%, you notice how it just made that all go super black. 
Okay, at zero, well, you won't be able to see it. I like to have it around this, the mid to low teens. And what I usually like to do is take a look at the other pieces in the photo and try and match the depth or the darkness of the shadow there. So for example, if I look at the shadow of up here, where you can see that the uh, light fixture, the base of the light fixture is making that shadow, I'm gonna try and match it to that. So that is the uh, size of it, that is the color of it. Let's see if I can get that there. So the size of it is about right, the color of it, I would say that this shadow looks a little bit darker. So I'm just gonna increase that multiplication a little bit. And as well, you'll notice that the color's slightly different. It's not black. So I can change that. I'm gonna change it to a slight more of a brown, okay? And now what does it look like? That color to that color. All right, that's getting closer. Maybe it's a little bit more orange. Let's see. There, there. All right, so that looks a little bit more realistic. Now we can multiply a little bit more. If we multiply too much, then just a, a brown box around there. So like I said, mid-teens is about where I typically find something that works well. From there, distance. Distance just means from how far away from the actual object are we going to be putting that shadow. The spread here can only be seen if I've got it a little bit farther away. Spread is going to be about like for example how far we're growing the um, the shadow how much do we want it to, to spread out and then from there we've got the size and if you increase the size then all of a sudden you'll notice that the size is going but because of the distance and the, the spread now it just starts to feather out later that shadow is not gonna is not looking any well it's not looking realistic now so I'm just gonna pull that size down I'm gonna take the spread down to almost n to nothing because we don't need to spread that much. And you can pull that distance right back again. And let's take a look. Does that look realistic? Yeah, that looks like a realistic shadow based on where the light source is coming from. So I like that. I'm going to go okay. So that's the first part. First part was creating the shadow. Next part is going to be uh, illuminating this so that just this lower corner here is going to be a little bit brighter because you, you can see that the sun is streaming from this window onto there. If we take that shot off, you'll notice that it's darker up here in, this, in the ceiling area, brighter down here. So obviously there's going to be this light that's streaming from the left down to the right. I want to mimic that and the best way to do that would be just to create a curves uh, layer and I'm going to pull this part up, the very bottom end. You'll notice that as soon as I do that, it just fades everything almost to white, right? So it really has a huge effect on the darker parts of the image. And again, I'm also gonna grab the middle of the curve and increase it. And lastly, I'm going to, to take this, invert it. Again, using uh, I'm gonna be using Command I to invert the mask. And I'm going to also do this. I'm gonna hold down my Option key or Alt key and then you'll notice the cursor that's coming up. It looks like a little square with the, the arrow on it. And that, when you click that, it's gonna do this. It's gonna make it so that this layer, this adjustment layer is only applied to the layer below. And now, if I were to take this, uh, if I were to take this, adjustment or this mask and invert it, you'll notice that it's only working on that one layer, which is exactly what we want. Now, I'm gonna click on my B for my brush. I'm gonna need to increase it to around that size. I'm gonna make sure that the hardness is zero and I am gonna look at my brush down here. I'm gonna go D for my default, puts the white in front and I'm just going to there. You see what I did there? Okay, I just brushed right in front of it and it's adding that white portion to the mask so that that brightness is affecting that bottom portion of the mask. Okay, so that looks good. I'm gonna take those two parts here and because the artwork is done, I'm gonna group them. I'm gonna put them into a single group. We're gonna call that artwork and that is done. Now I just have to put it 
behind everything else. Um, one of the reasons I like doing groups is because it keeps everything organized. You'll see that I've got uh, my edits all down here. That is what my image looked like HDR straight out of camera. This is what it looks like now with all my edits. Now I'm going to do that with my artwork. So um, I'm going to now show you how we're going to put the artwork behind everything. Now there's two ways of doing this. One, we can select the wall itself and then try and mask the artwork onto the wall or we can take everything that is in front of the wall and mask that out. And so I'm going to go for the ladder there and I'm going to just select everything that is in front and use that to mask everything out uh, that we, well, mask it all out. All right, so let's do that. I'm going to go over to here to my object selection tool. Now the object selection tool looks like that. If it, if yours, doesn't it may be one of these right maybe the magic wand the quick selection tool just hold down the tool and then all your other options will show up so click on the object selection tool first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to grab the lights and then i'm going to grab onto the chair and the vase let's see if it grabs all that perfect and you grab the vase and the and the, the plant i'm going to grab the chair i'm going to grab these chairs and I'm just going to see what else is it is blocking it. I think that's about it. All right. So now that all that is selected, I'm going to grab my my uh, group there. I'm going to apply the mask, and you'll notice that the mask is um, has applied, but it's done it the wrong way. It's actually showing everything that I the art where I don't want it to show and not showing it where I do want to show it. So all I have to do is click on the mask, go Command. I again just to invert the mask and now everything is behind that now there's one little thing that is really bothering me here and that is this vase because obviously if the artworks back here it's a clear vase I should be able to see the artwork behind the vase well here's a simple way of, of fixing that I'm gonna click B for my brush I'm gonna make that nice and small around that big I still have it on white so when I'm working with my mask White means that it's going to let through whatever is in the mask. And instead of being in an opacity of 100 up here, I'm going to click on 5 to make it 50% opacity. And then I'm just going to go over that glass so that half of that stuff comes through. Now when you look at it, it looks pretty realistic. Oh, now I it looks like I missed one little part. You'll see this leaf here and this leaf here. When I grab the chair, didn't grab those leaves. So let me just grab that W. I'm going to grab this entire. Oops, I'm going to grab this entire plant. There we are. Let's show that again. B zero for to make my opacity 100 and just going to draw mask that all out there we go now we're done all right if you have any questions let me know until next time have fun thanks for watching if you have any comments questions put them below and be sure to click on like subscribe and click on that little bell to be notified every time we put up new content and i am happy to announce that our online real estate photography course is now done and it is ready for you. Just go to www.robmoroto.com and use a coupon code that is in the show notes here to get yourself a nice little discount. All right, see you later.